me take you to the mountain and breakfast with Bob. Pancho Man! <laughs> we love Pancho Man. We are brought to you by ES Myoplex, Hoka One One Polar Velofix Normatec. Four seasons while alive, where we'll be hosting our championship edition on Sunday. MEO Power Breather, our next guest, Laura Siddle. Ironman Australia champion, correct? That's right, yeah. I love that. <laughs> so how are you doing? I'm very well. Thanks for having me on the show. No problem. So degree in mechanical engineering, what the heck are you doing racing <laughs> as a professional triathlete? I don't know. I did wonder that when I got off the plane and did my first few rides on the Queen K. I thought, oh, maybe I should go back to engineering. Yes. Um, yeah, I yeah, started in engineering and um, I'd always done sport right. growing up. So it always been a pretty big part of my life and moved to Australia with my corporate job as an engineer at the time about, when was that, 2009? Yes. And being from on, the UK. From the UK, yeah, from the and, UK. And now, and you've done military time too? I did a, a gap year in the British Army, yeah, So as you got well. to shoot big yeah. howitzer type yeah. Of things. Yeah, big guns and And the, the glow in the dark guns. type of things. Yeah, they well, they, um, the machine guns that we got to fire on one training exercise, every fifth bullet is a red bullet, so at night you can see, it gives you a bit more sighting on where you're aiming. <laughs> So yeah, I think of a big sparkler where you write yes. your name yeah, 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 <laughs> with yeah. a machine gun firing out, <laughs> writing wild. your name with the red bullets. So then you uh, go to Australia, yep. and is that where you found triathlon? Yeah, I mean triathlon's just huge over in Australia, and I think through friends from friends from work and uh, and that sort of thing, they wrote me into a, a charity bike ride, um, uh, Sydney Wollongong, yes. for about a 90k or 56 mile bike ride, and always doing sport I, I bought a bike the week before and said I'd join them and just you know really enjoyed it and it sort of as a consequence of that they suggested that I give triathlon a go and I mean I didn't really have a clue about what triathlon was at that point so it was a case of getting online and on the internet and googling and yeah <laughs> found a found a beginner squad um, yes. right in Sydney and, and joined up to that and kind of just yeah, got hooked ever since yeah and pretty successful right away um, I mean, I started as a complete beginner, yeah. um, probably in, in, in the slow lane, you know, I, I could swim. I was lucky as a kid, my um, parents sort of taught, gave us all swimming lessons, so, but I don't think I could swim compared to what you, Australians right. who are sort of born oh, in the water. God, yes, um, yes. So, and then, yeah, I mean, again, could ride a bike, but not hugely skilled on it. So um, how, how long from starting in this before you became a pro? Um, it turned out it's about four or five years. I okay, think. So, so I raced about four years as an age grouper. And working your, doing your job. Yeah, yeah. And age group. And when did, what was the race that made you feel, you know what, maybe I should see if I can go another step? Yeah, I, um, I came out to race the 70.3 in Honu. Yes. Um, up the coast. Love in, that race. Yeah. That's a hard to, run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On the golf course. I mean, it doesn't no seem like it should there. be that no. hot. There's not one piece of shade out there. That's right. And um, I came out and did that race in the 70.3 and um, was the overall amateur female winner. Yeah. Um, and actually came in just behind the pro winner, Belinda Granger, at the time. And um, I think that sort of started to make me think maybe I could do something a bit sure. more with this and then I went to Las Vegas for the world champs the 70.3 world champs that year uh, at the end of that year a few months later and um, just had a fantastic day one of those dream days and managed to again I won my age group there and was fastest overall female um, fastest age group female uh, fastest age group yeah, female yeah. yeah sorry and um, week later went to London and did the the Olympic world champs the ITU ones as, a, as an age grouper and retained my title from there wow and it was just a magical kind of seven or eight days and I think off the back of that and a few people had sort of been saying you know maybe you should as give a it a go and, won four uh, uh, yeah. world age group world yeah. championships <laughs> maybe I should go be but a pro but now having, having won and established it at the, the middle at the half distance at the 70.3 and um, I think yeah from just having sport as such a big part of my life in yeah. the background and playing different sports to different levels it was kind of one of those things of going if I don't do this now I'll, I'll do never it. do it and I don't want to look back in that 10 or 20 years and say what if and I never gave it a shot that, that's sort of the motto right don't yeah. look back yeah yeah don't Always, die wondering don't yeah don't yeah. die wondering yeah oh, that's that's very <laughs> cool so 2013 pro and then um, 
uh, fourth at Challenge Roth in 16. You won Ironman Australia this year. Yep. It, you've had this um, this really, really nice progression. What is it about, and then 2000, where am I at here? Uh, Matt, Matt Dixon, when did he enter into all this? Um, so when I decided to turn, take my pro license and turn pro, I knew I had to change the setup that I was in, right. um, in Australia, and I had a great coach there, and he'd taken me from a complete beginner through to, to being a professional. Um, but I wanted to put myself in an environment with other professionals right. um, and to um, be with a coach who had ex who had that experience of race of coaching and training professionals and, and kind of knew how, how the system worked. And so, yeah, reached out to Matt sort of um, beginning of 2014, really. And um, moved to San Francisco. And moved to, yeah, when he, when he kind of ex eventually responded and um, accepted me into the squad yeah moved to San Francisco yeah and how how did that change you as an athlete um wow well, as an athlete I mean I think it was a pretty big step sort of going from having the, the corporate job and the triathlon yeah. as a hobby and then um moving to the states with then suddenly the hobby was the job and what does that mean and what does it mean to be a professional athlete um and, and so it took a, you know, the first two years with Matt was also about learning how he operates, him learning how I operate, what sessions work for me, what doesn't, and what environment works for me. And it, it, so it's been, a, you know, the last two or three years with him has sort of been that gradual build as I've developed into a professional, I guess, from being right. the age grouper and what it means to do that and, and be that in the training and the racing and then... Yeah, the relationship with with Matt and, and Paul Buick as well. I'll, I'll add as well, who's Matt's sort of bike bike, bike coach. Guru and guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you win Ironman Australia, yeah. that your first Ironman yeah. win, yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh, uh, it was. Um, Especially it, since you're sort of been an adopted. It, yeah, Aussie. that's yeah. It was a magic magic day. It was really special. I think to um, you kind of say things fall into place for a reason, and I'd had a couple of second places and third places yes. and um, the opportunity came up to race at Port Macquarie at Ironman Australia and um, to go up there and yeah have so many I, I get goosebumps now <laughs> talking about it um, to go up there and have so many friends watching who were with me at when I very first started the sport in, in Sydney um, out on course and my very first coach was up there as well and just to yeah to have that win in australia where it kind of all started for me was yeah it was it was really special and i'll try and relive that finish shoot moment as long as i can <laughs> but yeah so this is your first time here it is my first time i, I i've been i've been out, out here the last few times what years watch watching it. yeah watch and what you learn from watching it that it seems ridiculously t stupid to race it yeah, I, <laughs> I think most of us would agree yeah. yes yeah no um Wow, I mean, what have you learned? I mean, it's been fantastic being able to come out here the last few years and watch, um, and then to be here this year racing for the first time. I think just learning, you know, you got to be patient out there. You got to respect respect the distance, but respect the conditions, yep. and and you know, and anything can happen. So keep going till the end, and you just don't know. You know, hopefully, just if you keep chugging along, and you'll still Good be in it happens. by the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, and do you have expectations for this particular, is, is your first time out, a little bit of sightseeing and yeah, want right. to see where I'm at? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the world champs and the best, the best, best women in the world are here. And, and here. so, yeah. And I, I feel really proud to be, to be here amongst them. And, um, you know, you want to see how you fare against, against the best women and, and what you can do. But also it, for me, with the, the training and the racing I've done, it's about, can I get out of can I get out on race day the training that I've been putting in and that the 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 paces and the speeds of the power or how I felt in training can mm. I can I get that out on race day and I can I put out a performance that when I cross that finish line regardless of where it is I'm super proud and happy with that effort and that then hopefully that's a a, a, re a result as well well and I know this is you know this isn't your a race Right no, here. that's right. Yeah, it's it's kind of a training day. It's really. a training yeah. day for yeah. the best day and try San Diego Triathlon Challenge, which is the following weekend. Yeah, October twenty second. Yeah, that's for our Challenge Athletes Foundation. That is right. Yeah, and you've been kind enough to uh, come right from here to come to San Diego to yeah. be part of that. And 
for our audience, our backstory is um, Lauren Parker was on stage with us last year, Aussie, 25 to 29 year old division, and she was uh, she was in second place in that tw division last year yeah. in Kona. Was planning to do Ironman Australia as her first Ironman Pro race. Yeah. And on April 18th, she was on her bike. I think both tires flatted at the same time. Yeah. Went down and was paralyzed. Mm. And um, I had her on my radio show in it in July. And usually, when someone is paralyzed, there's a fog for a good six months or a year. And Lauren was like, I want to get back to Kona. I, I, I'm willing <laughs> to do what it takes. I'm already back in a pool. I'm like, yeah. wow. So I said, if, you, if that's the way you feel, we're going to bring you to La Jolla yeah. to do our San Diego Triathlon Challenge, and we'll get a relay team. And so she's doing her first open water swim, which will be a mile at La Jolla Cove. You're going to be doing the 44 four mile bike ride. <laughs> the stupid thing was, I thought it was only an Olympic distance race. So I was like, oh, that's fine. I can do that the week after. And then I read and it was like, oh, that's a bit further than I'd planned. <laughs> and then Andy Ball from The Bachelor, who yep. you know, yep. through Team Everyman Jack, is going to be doing the 10 yeah. mile run. Yeah, no, super excited about that race. And as you said, that's the uh, that's the A race for the next uh, next few days. And uh, no, it's cool. great that um, Lauren's going to be come out, come out there and that CAF are supporting her. She's... Um, got ridiculous drive and determination yes. and you n had never met her no I'd, I'd never met her i mean i knew of her right. and i knew her name um but it was when i heard and read about the accident the week before iron man australia and she was meant to be on the start line with right. me and it just had oh i mean it just was such it's a profound effect and stuff so after the race i went to visit lauren in hospital uh, back in sydney and just connected with her ever since then and so when I realized that the the best day in tri CAF triathlon was the week after Kona, and I was like, well, if you're going out there, I'll fly over to San Diego and let's let's do it in a team. How fun is that? Yeah, That's I can't wait. Cool. Well, and the main thing is the mentoring that happens there. So we'll have Ironman World Champions and the hand cycle division, Carlos Maleda, David Bailey, so many athletes who've been there, yeah. right, who've gone through the process. So I think the mentoring and having you there with her is going to be a very yeah. special weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, she's super. She wants to come back and race Kona. Yep. Uh, with it, whether it's as a you know in the hand cycle and the para yes. as a para athlete, yeah. she's already talking about Paralympics uh, and stuff like that. Yep. And you know, they're looking into huge. I mean, she's been given sort of pretty much zero percent chance of walking again, but even that's not stopping her. They're looking Nothing. into everything they can do that might give her the best chance to walk. And I know she's got a very tiny little dream at the back of her head of doing this event as an able-bodied as well at some point. Yeah, and the cool thing that's is keeping her going. the options that are out there, she could go to the Paralympics, yeah. right, in yeah. 2020 yeah. in Tokyo. Because yeah. she's so young, and I mean, that's the totally. that's the sad thing, but it means that she's still got massive opportunity ahead of her to, yeah, take a different path than the one Love she had it. originally planned, but she can still do a lot. And You know, it, it's funny, like you said, you're this is... This is not your A race now. That that's it, it. It sort of puts things in perspective yeah. when that. The, this is this is fun. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, you could still be a mechanical engineer. Yeah. You are always a mechanical engineer. You're yeah. a mechanical engineer. But you meet such great people, and this sport changes lives. Yeah. Right. This sport takes people to a level and to a place sometimes that they never thought they would get to. Yeah. It's you know, sports being so powerful for me in my life and given me so many opportunities and, and the power of sport and that ability to change people's lives um, it, it's just so strong and, and just within triathlon and the people you meet and you know I'm pretty global travel the world but just yes. have met so many amazing people that inspire me every day and, and, and that's regardless of it's a beginner and it's the first time they're entering a race up to through all levels up to you know the pros the Chrissy right. Wellingtons and and Jan Fredinos and those sort of legends of the sport self included in that sort of thing so it's yeah it's fantastic to be involved in this sport and yeah I definitely don't regret that decision of leaving well, the corporate world well, and taking it, a leap <laughs> it's cool Sarah Piampiano was on right before you and she was working for HSBC working 100 hours a week and she moves into age group and then becomes a pro yourself mechanical engineer you find the sport of triathlon age group then pro there's a, a bond between everybody in these races because yeah. everybody was an age grouper yeah before most people were an age grouper before they became a pro so yeah. we can all relate with each other yeah and you know how much like hard work and training that everyone does absolutely and, you know i've full respect to the age groupers who do 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 triathlon especially the long distance when they're balancing it with their jobs their families and exactly. their other oh, commitments so i think everyone appreciates the work that you put in and so 
there's that kind of nice camaraderie and support when it comes to comes to race day. Love it. Even though you want to beat everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you beat everybody else on Saturday. That'd be awesome. I love it. In your I'll B, you in your B race. Yeah, that's right. In my B race. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it's that. been our guest, Pacha Man. Take us out. Let me take you to the sea and breakfast with Bob. Yeah.